Hey Beeves, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making some Argan Rose pressed shampoo bars inspired by a product from Lush. I've shared a few shampoo bar formulations over the last few years, and I've had a lot of fun playing with different ways of putting shampoo bars together. Up until now, all of the shampoo bars I've shared have had some kind of melted hard fat or fatty thickener, so something like cocoa butter or stearic acid, or maybe both, uh, melted into the product to hold it together. Something that intrigued me about the Lush shampoo bar that inspired this formulation was that it didn't have any of those things. From the ingredient list, it is mostly a brick of sodium laurel sulfate in the little stick uh, format and then there's a few other things but from looking at the bar you can see that it is going to be mostly sodium lauryl sulfate because it does kind of just look like a sugar cube kind of like a sugar cube but instead of sugar uh, surfactants and that sugar cube analogy is quite an apt one when you make sugar cubes you know you're adding just enough water to get the sugar to slightly dissolve pressing it together and then leaving it for the water to evaporate off and then the sugar can recrystallize together. This is also how bath bombs hold together. So that's what we're doing here, meaning these bars are entirely cold processed. You don't need to melt anything. So these bars are almost 90% solid surfactant. I've gone with a blend of sodium cocoa isothionate and sodium cocoa sulfate rather than the uh, pure sodium lauryl sulfate that Lush uses. This blend of surfactants is more gentle as sodium cocoa isothionate is quite a lot gentler than sodium lauryl sulfate. And while sodium cocoa sulfate does contain some sodium lauryl sulfate, it is also generally considered to be more gentle than pure sodium lauryl sulfate. To that base of surfactants, we have a few other things. So we have some uh, rose and some lemon fragrance oils for a gorgeous scent. We have a bit of water in there to moisten the mixture. So that helps partially dissolve the surfactants just a wee bit so that when we press them together, as they dry, they can fuse together. I've included a tiny amount of red dye to make the bars pink. And then two more ingredients that are in there because they were in the lush one. And I find I really, really like how it turns out. There's some moisturizing glycerin. I find this works well for me, but I do think a large part of that is because where I live is very, very dry. If you live somewhere very hot and humid, I would probably dramatically reduce or drop the glycerin altogether and replace it with more distilled water. There's also some carrageenan, which gives these bars just the most gorgeous slip when you're using them in the shower. You know, that sort of like gummy slipperiness. That's, that's what we get in this bar. It doesn't have any of the downsides that you might associate with the skin feel of a gum because this is a wash off product, but it's really, really gorgeous as you're sort of working around on a loofah or over your head, you'll really feel that, that slippy slidey goodness. I'll be smashing these shampoo bars into cubes of sudsy goodness using my bath bomb press from The Bath Bomb Press out of Edmonton, Alberta, just a few hours north of me. So thank you so much, Lee, for my gorgeous press. Uh, if you don't have a press, make sure you're reading the blog post for some suggestions on different ways to put these bars together. But yeah, come on, let's get started. We'll begin by mixing together our first three ingredients. So in this bowl, we have 49 grams of sodium cocoa isothionate, and you can see that it is in the stick form. 37.99 grams of sodium cocoa sulfate, also in the stick form. Uh, and as you might've guessed, this is a sulfate, so this uh, the inclusion of this ingredient means that this formulation is not sulfate free. And four grams of iota carrageenan. So now I'm gonna put on my dust mask. Next step here is I'm gonna mix everything together and I'm also gonna be working on kind of snapping up some of the SCI bits because they're so much bigger than the, the SCS and I, I want the mixture to be a bit more uniform. So in this small bowl, we have 0.01% of red number 40, which will make these shampoo bars pink, 2.75 grams of distilled water, 1.75 grams vegetable glycerin, and 0.25 grams of a 50% citric acid, 50% distilled water solution. So we're going to add that to the surfactant mixture and blend to combine thoroughly. And in this small dish, we have three grams of argan oil, half a gram each rose fragrance oil and lemon slices fragrance oil, and a quarter gram of liquid germal plus. So we're just going to add that to the mixture and uh, blend thoroughly to combine as well. All right, so now that everything is all mixed together, I've taken my dust mask off because the mixture is, is weighed down now that it's had some moisture incorporated into it. So now we can start pressing. To press these shampoo bars, we're going to use my beautiful bath bomb press and we're going to use the small cube mold. So one of the first things I'm going to do, and this is a tip that Ariane shared with me after I shared my chocolate Rasool shampoo bars, you take this piece, trace it on some parchment paper, and then cut 
out those pieces of parchment paper and use that to line your mold. And with that, uh, they, the shampoo bars just, they unmold absolutely beautifully. So this is an amazing tip and thank you so much for sharing, Ariane. Um, so we're gonna make two different shampoo bars that are 50 grams. So I'm gonna weigh out half of the mixture in here, transfer it in here, and then it's smashy, smashy time. Put in another custom cut square of parchment and then the top of the mold, pop it in the press, hold down the safety and press. Perfect and lovely. Let's do the other one. So something to note about the consistency of this mixture. You can see that it's not, it's really not as sturdy uh, as some of the other shampoo bars that I've done, which kind of tend to be a lot stickier and a lot more inclined to sort of stick to themselves. So you can see that this is a much more sort of PC mixture. And so you really do need to press it. I'm not sure if you need a bath bomb press, something that you know it really has this much kick behind it, um, but you will want to be really squishing it into a mold. Uh, something that you could look into that some readers have told me about is a moon cake press and they've, they've found that that has worked for some sort of more pressed things. Um, but you could also probably just try putting it in like a measuring cup and then really smashing the top down to something slightly smaller, like a slightly smaller measuring cup. So yeah, if you try that, let me know how it goes. And there we go, a fresh Argan Rose pressed shampoo bar in this style of Lush. And these really are quite delicate when first made, so uh, don't handle them too much. You'll wanna leave them to age for a couple days before using them. Uh, please make sure you are referring to the blog post linked in the description box for more details on that. And I wanted to do a bit of bubbles show and tell. So here is the version of this bar that's been hanging out in my shower and getting lots of use in testing. I made this late last year. Got a little bit of water in here. Obviously I'm not going to be washing my hair on camera, but I think this should give a good idea. So I have been using this as an all over body wash as well and it's incredible. The bubbles are just insane. So I kind of remember the first time I washed my hair with this shampoo bar, the amount of lather that it kicked out was so much that I was basically just doing this and squeezing the excess bubbles out of my hair and then use that to wash the rest of my body because there's just, the lather is just like so gorgeously abundant and oh my gosh, it's so like silky and rich and just, mm, yes. I adore the lather on these shampoo bars. And there you go. So we just made some beautiful Argan Rose shampoo bars. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, give this video a like, and make sure you are reading the partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below this video. You'll find a lot more information there, information about substitutions, scaling, shelf life, where to buy all the ingredients, and a whole lot more. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.